Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kurt. Welcome back to Farlands or Bust. Woof. This is episode 638. 638 of Farlands or Bust. Publishing on Wednesday, January 4th, 2017. I almost said it. I almost said 2016. That would have been incorrect. That would have been incorrect indeed, Kurt J. Mac. But no, no. January 4th, 2017. As we continue west. The sun is rising in the east, so we will continue west towards those far lands. Still raising money for Child's Play Charity. Still having met our season six goal. Obviously, I don't know why why it wouldn't go backwards, that's for sure. But yeah, we were, we, we met that goal and we continue, continue to exceed that goal. Got quite a few and, and even one very, another very generous donation just before the new year. Up to 61,000. That's a big number to say, Wolfie. $61,328.26. Much appreciated to everybody who keeps going to farlandsbus.com to donate. All that money going directly to Child's Play Charity, helping get toys, books, games to kids in hospitals around the world. Much appreciated indeed. And of course, this Saturday, as I announced in the previous episode, this Saturday we will be holding our Flabathon live stream celebration. I cannot, I cannot climb mountains anymore. The live stream celebration for reaching the Season 6 goal which pretty much uh, includes the the kind of finale of Season 6, when at the end of the live stream I will finally, finally press F3 to see how far we've walked. When you press F3 in this video game, for those of you who don't know, you get a little uh, heads-up display, a little display of your coordinates in the world. And of course those are important to us, because that tells us how far away we are from spawn, and of course how much closer we've gotten to the Far Lands, which are at 12 and a half million blocks from spawn. And we are continuing to walk there as we've done for over five years now, so it's very interesting, and I'll be very interested to see where we'll be. Last May, uh, no, two Mays ago, May 2015 was the last time we pressed F3 at the end of the Season 5 Flabathon, and we were at 2266779 2,266,779 blocks from spawn. Are we over 3 million? 3.5 three million, maybe? Couldn't possibly be 4 million, right? That'd be craziness. We have had a pretty good uh, clip here. We've been walking along at a pretty good clip this year with some minor uh, hang-ups, I suppose. Some, some minor little uh, setbacks from here to there, but... Uh, for the most part, we've we've been perhaps at some of the most uh, steady pace for the longest time in season six here. So who who knows? I tell you what, all the Farlanders will know on Saturday, January seventh, twenty seventeen. That's this Saturday. Uh, I'm thinking of starting about nine a.m. Pacific time. That's noon. Eastern Standard Time, and the going goal is to walk for a little bit of a throwback to the first original Flavathon that we set for 8 hours and 20 minutes. It's a good place to start. It's a good place to start. Still tossing about the idea of, oh, for every $10,000 above $60,000 that we, we meet, I'll tack on another hour. That might be a thing. That might be a thing, indeed, to, to try to go for. Uh, obviously, the overall kind of a nice goal to meet would be that 66,000, which is what we, in total, after the Flabathon raised for Season 5. Always, always... I see you, <laughs> floating sand block. Uh, uh, that's always a good uh, kind of goal to, to try to one-up the previous season, I suppose, but uh, I'm still thinking about that. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. It's kind of a catch-22, don't you know? Obviously, we've been waiting for such a long time for me to press F3. Would it discourage people from donating if they think it's going to extend that time any further? And then certainly that would also potentially hinder 
those of you on, say, like the East Coast or even certainly in Europe from being able to catch the ending, which, again, no matter what I do, <laughs> no matter what I do, oops, no matter what I do, I'm going to break a boat. Uh, no matter what I do, no matter what I schedule or how I schedule, there there are in, indeed certainly Farlanders who are unfortunately going to be uh, not available to uh, to watch. And that's okay, this all goes up on YouTube later. Uh, the Flobathon, I'm, I'm saying. Uh, and certainly even the, the F3 moment I, I kind of record as a separate... Hey! As a separate episode entirely. Hey! <laughs> Wolfie, I don't want to punch you! <laughs> Stay out of the way! Boop! So, so yeah, th there's kind of a catch-22 related to that. The, most of the feedback I've gotten, I've, I've been uh, discussing these things with patrons and, and my mods and things. Uh, most of the feedback I've gotten has been pretty positive to that. Um, but most of the, uh, the kind of, eh, about it has come from those in, in Europe and the UK. And, uh, you know, folks who... After eight eight hours, after nine hours, if we start at nine, would be nine p.m. Eastern time, which is well into the wee morning hours in Europe anyway. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, I might as well just I, I could just say it, <laughs> and and we'll just see how it works. There's nothing wrong with that. But generally speaking, these flabathons themselves haven't really been about raising more money. Uh, Zeldathon raised over three hundred thousand dollars in their most recent Zeldathon that just ended a day ago. Yeah, a day ago here, um, in a week, in less than a week, and yeah, a week actually, I think, uh, which is, is is crazy. But that's never been that's never been what the Farlands thing is is about. So let's not, for those of you new, let's not confuse this with Zeldathon, with 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 the Mindcrack Marathon. You know, a forty-eight hour, you know, raise all the money that we can stream. We've raised. We've raised the goal that we've we set out. That's kind of what the duration of the season is about. The Flabathon is more of just a celebration. We can all get together. We can do a, a crazy walkathon marathon of the Far Lands experience. But it's 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 less about of course raising money for charity, <laughs> regardless, is, is gonna be a good thing, but it, it's less about it's it's less about that than it is just a celebration, and then to finally and 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 to have a it it culm, culminate culminate culm, 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 the culm, the culminate the the finale of uh, of the season by finally pressing F3 as, as kind of a last final hurrah, and and that's what the flabathon is about. So I kind of want to keep it about that, and also stress free, stress free, stress free 2017. <laughs> Flabathon, stress-free, take it easy, easy both on myself and, and my fans and mods and not needing too much additional things. I'm obviously, I'm going to be switching up my um, stream graphics and buttons and overlays and stuff. And I suppose if you are a Twitch regular, a Twitch subscriber, uh, and you do like have a resub coming up that you want to do, make sure you do that before or after Flabathon, because during Flabathon I will be disabling those subscriber notifications, you know, resub notifications, bit notifications, things like that, because it is Far Lines or Bust about the charity fundraiser and not about my personal Twitch channel or anything like that. So just keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go forth with that, and I'm, I'm personally looking forward to it. I hope you are too. That, of course, is twitch.tv slash KurtJMac. Make sure you also, uh, if, you have, if you have the ability, follow my Twitter, twitter.com slash KurtJMac, for updates and, and more things like that. And if you are a patron of mine, make sure you're part, uh, if you're, if you're at the, the level that, that it's, it's unlocked, the, the Discord, if you are a patron, and you're able to get on the Discord, get on there, and then we've, like I said, we've been discussing pertinent topics to the Flabathon and my channel and things like that. And uh, that's that, that assistance and guidance is, is much appreciated as well. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. That does mean this is episode 638. I'm going to have one more episode come out on Friday. That's going to be episode 639. We'll have the Flabathon... And then I'll have the finale where I build the F3 monument. 
That will be episode 640. Therefore, season 7 will start on episode 641. Nice. Sort of, a sort of quasi-round number that we can hopefully uh, keep track of how long each season goes. So that, that, that'll be cool. I think, I've, I think I've timed this out right. I think I'm doing this appropriately. But yeah, let's make an elevated hidey hole. And let me get to uh, a few questions here from donors to Child's Play Charity. Oops. A few of them probably waiting a bit of time to have their uh, question answered here. Uh, let's... Wolfie! What was that all about? He, like, walked on this tree. <laughs> you nerd! <laughs> let's go to sleep and continue in the morning. <laughs> And a nerd dogness. And a nerd dogness. I think that is what I did. He like jumped up on that ledge and then came crashing down. Came crashing down indeed. Boop. All right, let's continue. Let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to talk about that with that? I don't. I don't think. Whoa! I got all turned around there. Hello. I don't think so. Um, I'll have. Hopefully decided on a definitive starting time. It will be. How about this? We'll we'll, we'll schedule it like a rocket launch. The the launch of Flabathon will be net no earlier than 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 noon Eastern time. It might be like an hour later. I'm trying to figure out my sleep schedule here. I don't want to do it too early. That was a problem that I had with season four's Flabathon, and why I feel it was kind of like one of the one of the least successful is I tried to plan it so huge and start so early to make sure that everybody in all the time zones could enjoy. And uh, my my body and the stress related to it did not allow me to sleep very well. So therefore, I was like feeling sick when I woke up to try to start streaming at like 6 a.m. or whatever ridiculous time I, I had set for myself. And uh, I'd be like, sorry guys, I'm going to I'm gonna have to take like a four hour nap. So that we can continue this, and I can actually be halfway decent and alive for it. Uh, so yeah, we're not gonna not gonna push anything too hard. And so far, everybody, and I appreciate everybody's uh, support and kind of understanding of that. And I, I think everybody, I think, is uh, interested in keeping it kind of just chill and relaxed and a celebration, a hangout, a a, 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 a Kurt J. Max speed celebration. We're not we're not going to a big techno festival with lights and lasers and thousands of people dancing in the stadium. We're just hanging out. We're just sitting around watching the Far Lands Bust experience, sitting around a couch, eating some snacks, <laughs> talking to friends, that sort of thing. That's That, my friends, is the Flabathon experience indeed. Let's see here. Let's get in a boat. Continue west. I do have a few questions here that um, perhaps, speaking of sitting around the couch with friends, sometimes sitting around the couch with friends, we tend to talk about some serious stuff, some serious life stuff. Uh, I've already delved into these topics on live streams a few times. Um, but uh, let me just get through the questions here. These are kind of questions I apologize if you've waited so long. I've put them off because I've not known how to answer them, uh, but I think it's 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 well enough now, at least in the Farlander community. Uh, the times I've already mentioned things that uh, it's 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 well enough, and and I'm practiced enough in in responding that I think now is a good time as we conclude this perhaps one of the the grandest seasons of Farlander Bust. An anonymous donor asked. You may have talked about this in another video, but why did you decide to move from Chicago as a Chicagoan? I was very offended. Just kidding. I understand you may have wanted to escape the cold weather. I'm freezing over here. Also, are you planning on getting any other pets in the future? And then most recently, Mousepad asked, Hi Kurt, how's Eva doing? You haven't mentioned her in a while. So here's the big uh, matzo ball uh, worth kind of mentioning this time around. And, and I, like I said, I've already actually opened up about this in Twitch live streams. I've gotten some questions, mostly about Eva. You guys haven't heard about Eva uh, lately. 
Um, the long and the short of it, let me let me answer the Eva question. Eva was is she's fine. She's alive and well. <laughs> Good lord, this is not that type of story. <laughs> Eva is alive and well. Um, for those of you who don't know, I got uh, I moved from Chicago here to Phoenix, and uh, soon after that, I did adopt an Australian cattle dog, Eva, a red healer. And if you follow me on Twitter, or if you have watched live streams, I have occasionally had the Eva cam on. Uh, if you watch Twitter or Instagram, I've posted pictures. Um, but as of late, there have been none and no real mentions. Uh, and that's because, and this is also related to moving from Chicago, uh, I, moving here uh, to Phoenix, and, and just in general, I, I was in... I was not by myself. <laughs> I didn't move here by myself. Uh, I was in a relationship, and that relationship in this past year has ended, and Eva has gone to live with the other person who was in that relationship. I'm not going to go into detail about the relationship aspect of things, because I still, I keep, I've kept, and I still continue to keep all that sort of stuff private, uh, as I think I'm entitled to, and I appreciate you respecting that, and not speculating or asking or whatever uh, the internet sometimes does, but I appreciate that sort of uh, respect in that regard. But, yeah, that is, Eva is fine, and, and as far as I'm concerned, well, and being well taken care of, uh, just unfortunately no longer here with me in, in this house. I'm still in the same house that I was in when I moved here to Phoenix, uh, but just now on my own. Um, which is fine, and I'm not looking for any, I'm not looking for any, uh, I don't know, pity or, or, or anything like that regarding that situation, um, it, the most I can say is that it, it was m honestly my decision to have gone this route in my personal life, and, uh, so, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking for any pity, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing terrible has happened, it, it's just a, a, a thing that happened in life, and, and happens to a lot of people in life, and perhaps, perhaps, Two or five years from now, I can I can look back and perhaps let you guys know the lessons I've learned. But right now, it's it's not a good time for that, uh, especially with Flabathon and everything around the corner. We want to think about good things in the community and and, and Farlanders and and Wolfie and all that good stuff. So, so yeah, that kind of uh, answers those big uh, those big questions that have been hanging. I've been seeing some questions still on YouTube videos, um, and I and I was seeing it pretty frequently in Twitch chats, because we did even have an Eva emote over on Twitch that I uh, recently uh, replaced, um, and, uh, and and yeah. So that that is out of the... Careful, have I? <laughs> that is out of the... That, that's out in the air, and um, yeah, I, I, I honestly, I, I didn't know how to address such things. I was considering just making like a separate entirely separate dedicated video or vlog even about it but in talking it with with twitch and and people i know it it uh it just seems like it's better to just kind of say it matter of factly in the in the avenues of which people watch like i had my twitch viewers okay and, and now i have my farlands of bust viewers okay and 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 now we can kind of be like well okay uh we'll certainly miss eva as i certainly do uh, but I think we can we can move on and, and move forward. Move forward? Is that not is that not what the Farlands expedition is about? Moving forward, not backwards. <laughs> Sidewards, not forwards. And twirling, always twirling towards the Farlands. <laughs> oh man! So yeah, I do appreciate the questions and and perhaps the concern, but uh, everything everything is is okay. Uh, as far as health and and alivitude in that regard, uh, but then that also answers a bit, hopefully, of the question of why I'd moved from Chicago. It, I, I I wasn't alone in that move, and and there were you know, it was more than one person who decided. Uh, I certainly like Arizona quite a bit. Um, the summers are a little hot. That's the only kind of complaint. Well, a couple complaints. The summers are a little hot, a little warm, a little a bit of 120 degrees Fahrenheit um, for three months <laughs> out of the year. Uh, that's that's actually a little bit. I've, 
two summers I've been here, so that's that I could probably deal with. Um, it is, however, there aren't that many people here. Uh, it's not somewhere that I have any family. Uh, it's not somewhere that I particularly have any friends. Uh, I've not really made friends here, and uh, that's 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 starting to be a thing. And since my my home situation has changed, uh, I can also say, and this is something I've mentioned recently to uh, people in Twitch, uh, Twitch viewers, is that I am, uh, once again, I am um, very seriously and, and very seriously planning uh, yet another move, I am afraid, which is one of those things is why, oh, I should really plan this Flabathon pretty soon. It was honestly almost starting to become, I was almost starting to accept, oh, well, maybe maybe we won't reach this goal until, until after, after I, I, I get a chance to move. Um, but no, no, <laughs> that was not to be. So, uh, and that's great. That's that's great. Now that this is this is here, and we can do the flabathon, uh, we can get that pass, and and I can concentrate uh, on on ending up in a place where perhaps uh, you know I do have people and friends uh, and and things things to do uh, and inspiration. It's always a lot more. Uh, it's easier to work when you, you're around people who either do the same work or, or, or have the same interests, just friends or interested in your success. Um, and, and I know the internet certainly makes it easier to have connections with those people, but it, I still think there's a lot of value to be placed in actual, like, real face-to-face -face in the same physical realm, meat space, as it's called. <laughs> Uh, interactions and friendships, so uh, that's what I'm looking towards, and that can happen. That might happen as as soon as as February. Certainly, that's that's the soonest sort of scenario that it will be happening. But uh, that's something I, I certainly hope to maybe be a little bit more open and and share that experience with you guys a little bit more, uh, since this will be uh, a trip and and a move and an experience I'll be undertaking on my own. Uh, that, that's kind of also one of the reasons why I, I moved out here to Phoenix and I didn't really tell anybody until, like, I was here for, like, a few months, right? Uh, remember that? Remember that, everybody? Good old times. But, yeah. Out, out in the open and, and into bed. Let's go to sleep. And uh, continuing onness. If, if ever there was a time where we needed to hear about continuing onness, it's right now, right, Wolfie? You need another thing, don't you? Another another treat. Yeah, that's what I thought. You dang clums face. Did I use all those boats already? Got gravy. We also gotta be, at least in the next episode, considering preparing our inventories for the Flabathon. Tend to have a little bit different requirements for, for making sure we're keeping on track and have enough supplies and, and wood and and wool and, and things so that we're not caught out in the middle of the night without a place to sleep during a flabathon. It's pretty easy to get distracted. It's pretty easy to, to get distracted. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen a flabathon before, about every hour or less, I do need to stop playing and back up the game save because uh, we've noticed as the, the world continues to get larger, I think... I'm not sure. You'll have, you'll have to ask Seth Bling or Etho or somebody, but I think that this version of the game has a memory leak, and we've had it happen at least once, and it's possibly also partially uh, re partially responsible for that time we lost Wolfie uh, to a glitch in Flabathon the third. Um, that the game starts to lag out and freeze to the point where it freezes and crashes, and we lose all of the saves from the last time we backed up. So that happens on about a 45 minute to an hourly basis. And the backup process isn't too fast, as you might consider with a 24 gigabyte save file. Uh, ten, you know, and, and if you've ever actually looked at a Minecraft save, it's not like one file, it's like thousands upon thousands of little itty bitty data files that have to be transferred uh, from, I usually back it up to a, a secondary hard drive on my system. Uh, more logistically, I, I do back it up to a network storage, and then of course we have, uh, or I have an, an, uh, a cloud backup service that I use, but for Flabathon I'll, I'll be backing it up locally just to kind of 
speed up the process. Uh, but it, but that's also good. As as I've been live streaming more and more recently, I have found that hourly breaks to to step back and stretch, refill a water, uh, are, are good for for live streams. So I think that fits pretty well, and and there's a a nice schedule to keep for Flabathon also. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, looking looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. I'm I'm getting a little stressed about it. <laughs> like I'm still nervous about it. Like oh okay, I'm keeping it stress free and uh, casual. Is is that enough? Is 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 that kind of diminishing the importance? Is that you know? Uh, I I all I'm always questioning. I'm always questioning every little uh, idea and decision I I have to make. Uh, but I do appreciate uh, so far everybody has been positive and, and looking forward to it as well. We have a question here from a Ace Ace Mystery. I notice the popular games you've played, other than Minecraft. Uh, oh, the most popular game you've played, other than Minecraft, is the modern Tomb Raider series franchise. Are there any popular triple game triple A games out there that you have not played because you think they will be saturated with views from other YouTubers? Or are you simply and generally more interested in the niche games bracket? Are there games out there that you'd like to play but perhaps feel you don't have the time? Um, I suppose I am a bit more interested in, in what you call the niche, what, what I call like the indie market, I suppose. And and it doesn't even have to be indie, but just, you know, because obviously we played... I really One of my favorite games of 2016 uh, was what we played on Twitch, and then I uploaded here the, the VOD to was uh, Abzu, that underwater game with the, the scuba diver person. I think that was published by a major studio, but it, it just the gaming experience was that kind of indie game feel, and it was it was just an experience that wasn't weighed down by uh, a, a large AAA franchise name, or 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 f uh, you know you know it's not Dead Space Two or or Mass Effect Andromeda. You know it's, it doesn't have this this full weight of a series or 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 like a AAA world behind it that comes with a lot of preconceived notions and things and, and just the experience and the game itself was very interesting and unique and in sh short I, I'm, I'm finding myself not getting into at least the narrative games that are incredibly long like I don't like I've heard great things about like the Witcher series and it honestly of all those types of RPG-esque games that one probably aligns most with the type of gameplay I would enjoy, but just the size of the worlds and the length of the stories and quests just is overwhelming to me, and I don't know that it would hold my interest. Same thing with the uh, the Elder Scrolls, the Skyrim series, is um, the uh, similarly the the Fallout games and Bioshock games. It, those those worlds and those stories and, and those story arcs and and the uh, just the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a word that like explains like a game's world or or shared the shared world that people who know that the oh, there's a really like fancy word that's very hot recently <laughs> that I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. That's how out of the, out of the loop I am. Um, canon. The canon of the game uh, far exceeds my capacity for wanting to understand it and enjoy it. So these, these smaller games, um, obviously open world games, tend to not have that weight carried along with it. Like, we're not, like, there's no... Obviously, there's, like, Minecraft story mode, but, more, you know, there's no story, there's no myth of Steve the Minecraft guy or, or, or the Ender Dragon or anything like that that I'm aware of. Uh, same thing with, like, Astroneer. It's such a new game, maybe they will involve some sort of story with Astroneer, but right now it's just, oh, you're just an astronaut, dude, and you can do all this cool stuff. All right, enjoy, enjoy the sandbox. Of course, there can be sandboxes that are simply too open, too ill-defined, that would have the negative effect of not keeping my interest either. 
So, yeah, I just, I, it's just, uh, I'm not, it's not a conscious choice. Like, I'm not saying, oh, all triple A games are terrible, so I'm not going to play them. It's just the ones that I do play, um, or the ones that do get released that I don't play, I just am not interested in, whether or not they are triple A games or, or whatever. Tomb Raider, um, yeah, I mean, that one I bought into and played because I was a fan of the previous franchise, the previous canon, uh, I suppose, the storyline, the lore, uh, the gameplay. Uh, unfortunately, they stripped all that stuff out. Everything from the story to the gameplay, uh, in, in, to the character, uh, to its core, and, and completely made a new game, which I am no fan of. Um, I mean, you could argue that the Forza series is, is a incredibly popular game series as well. It's a little bit different, I suppose. People tend to treat racing games and sports games differently than, than say, your narrative games. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, just nothing has, uh, has, has interested me. I mean, I also played... Kevlar! I knew that was gonna happen, actually. I've also played, uh, Inside. Inside was a very popular game for being, quote-unquote, a weird indie game, I suppose you could say. I do, I did mention before that I do have Overwatch, but that might be one of those games that I perhaps purchased based on the, the hype and kind of everybody I know <laughs> seems to enjoy it and play it, so I'm like, well, I might as well give it a shot, and I still really haven't given it the proper shot, and maybe I still will, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's just a personal preference thing. It's hard... Uh, hard to put a... Hard to put a, a particular uh, label on that. I mean, I am also... I really like... quote-unquote, properly Ill, Ill, ill-named... or categorized walking simulators. I don't know that many people who are really into, like, the AAA games and, and the Call of Duties and the, the Overwatches and, and, and the Witchers and the Skyrims, I don't know many people who are get engrossed in those realms. I don't think those same people like walking simulators that they don't understand or they don't respect the walking simulator genre. Uh, so it just might be a, a, the, weird, the weird dial, the weird pendulum that I'm on is far more to that direction than, than the other. Um, which I don't particularly think is is weird or odd. It certainly, I certainly haven't not played a game. I haven't I haven't wanted to play a game and then not played it because I thought, like your question asked, that it was like too overplayed on YouTube or anything like that. I've never not done. I've never done that. That's not been a deciding factor. Um, if anything, that would honestly, business wise, that would be a good move if I started playing. Call of Duty or, or Overwatch or, or whatever, and 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 I would you have to be good at it too. That's also a kind of a caveat. It's one thing to just play a really popular game, but if if you're good at it or if you're doing it in a different way, certainly you can you can rise uh, to the to the top of that list usually. But yeah, that was a good chat, everybody. Good chat. <laughs> now get out there and play a good game. Uh, <laughs> it was a locker room chat. The uh, yeah, thank you very much for those donations and those questions. I'm trying to find a spot. Trying to find a spot. Uh, how about you sit there, Wolfie? I'll give you a nightlight. Bing! And I... Maybe we can have a sidey hole? I don't think that we're close enough to the sidey... Uh, to, uh, to make a window. Alright, what do we got? We got dirt! Dirt for Kurt! Alright. A sidey hole, my friends, is a hidey hole made in the side of a cliff face so that you have... Oh. Eh, sort of. <laughs> so that you have a window upon which to see the world around you. And perhaps, hopefully, see the sunrise in the morning. Um, I'm not sure this one qualifies. This is, this is a little bit weirder than, than normal, but uh, yeah. Second, second to last... Full-size hidey hole here. Before the Flabathon of Season 6 here. I almost didn't remember what the season was. I kind of started to panic. I didn't think I had enough wood on me. I just got done talking about how much inventory we need to make beds. Uh, and, and have actual, like, resources upon which we can survive an, an yet another Flabathon. Let's not run into trouble now, Kurt J. Mack. But I do appreciate... Of course, all of your understanding with what topics we covered today, but also all of your input and all of your response. 
based on uh, the direction we're taking this Flabathon, and I am very much looking forward to seeing everybody, or as many people as possible. If you can't make it, I'm really sorry. Uh, wish, you, wish, wish you could, but we'll certainly have you uh, on the videos, watching the VODs, or, or, or you're still part of the Farlander community. And one more episode, one more episode before Saturday's Flabathon. Farlandsabus.com is where you can keep continuing to donate to Child's Play Charity. My name is Kurt. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. <laughs>